So last month I made over $100,000 in the AI automation space and I've also built two seven-figure tech businesses. And in this video, I'm gonna break down how I'm going to launch a brand new no-code SaaS business in the next 30 days to 1K in recurring revenue. And I plan to document the entire process, both the business and the technical aspects of the entire project. So first I'm gonna discuss what I'm going to build, then I'll get into the tech stack, how I'm gonna get the coding done, what I'm gonna use for the front end, the back end, and the database. And then make sure to stick around to the end, I'm gonna go over my overall strategy and the marketing plan. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about what I'm going to build. You may or may not know, but I have for the last few years sold a automated content machine. It's called the Content Engine Database. The premise behind it is that it helps you easily produce and distribute hundreds of videos, images, and text posts per week. It's really great for content agencies. You can see a lot of my clients that I have testimonials here from have been content agencies. I also have a lot of content creators that have built bigger brands and they need to produce a lot of content. And this has been a great product over the last few years. It has run a bunch of big YouTube channels and it costs $4,500 and it costs $500 if you want me to do the install. Now, the one disadvantage to this system is that it is built on no code tools. So in order to use it, you do have to put together a few different subscriptions. I give you the instructions, of course, but you do have to assemble this and stack a few different tools together in order to build out the solution. Now, there's some advantages to that as well, because a lot of people like no code and they can put these things together and they can make their own modifications. And for them, it works really well. But there's this whole other audience out there that just wants a similar tool as a SaaS product where they really don't have to think much about anything. They want it super simple and they just want to use it and they want to scale their content without having to look at any tech or think about any tech at all. So now over the years, I've thought about doing this many times, but I just really didn't want to do all the coding and try to do all the marketing and get people into it. But over the last few years, since AI has come onto the scene, it's really changed how we code. I have this project here on GitHub called the No Code Architects Toolkit. It's a growing project that I released last year that allows you to launch your own API and cancel a bunch of API subscriptions that you might be using in your no code projects. And I was able to build that out extremely fast. And I just realized that as I was about to start to develop the next version of the content engine database, that it was about time that I switched from no code to SaaS. And so that's what I'm gonna be building over the next month is a SaaS version of the content engine database. And really the premise of the product will be to help you easily create and produce and distribute 100 plus pieces of content per week. All right, so let's get into the tech stack and what I'm gonna to use to actually build this out. When it comes to the coding, I know a lot of people are really interested in these platforms like Lovable and uh, Bolt.new, but for myself, coming from a place where I do know how to code, they're great if you don't know how to code at all, but if you know how to code, they're actually very restrictive because it's harder to use. So I'm going to be doing everything in Cursor. That has been a platform that helped me build out the No Code Architects Toolkit, and it has worked out really well. Now, when it comes to the front end, I'm gonna go ahead and just pick React, that's a JavaScript framework that works really well. It's quite popular and it's pretty easy to launch apps with that. Now, when it comes to the back end, long term, I'm going to use Python, but I'm not going to start with Python because one of the things I'm going to do in the process of launching this is really try to move as quickly as I can. And I think I'm going to be able to move a lot faster if I use a no code tool. So I'm going to go ahead and use N8N for the back end later down the line when I'm working on like a version two or a version three and I have the front end working well. I've got a couple of good features that are really working well for the, the users and they like it. Once everything has solidified a bit and I need things to scale and be a lot faster, then I'll transition into Python when I have that blueprint of everything that I actually need to build. Because the thing is, is that when you start to build out these apps, things change really quick. And once you start to write code, it takes a lot more time to make changes, whereas no code allows you to do very complex things and change things very quickly, all very easily. The only downside is that it doesn't really scale that well. And the cost of no code is a lot more than when you actually have some code running on your servers. So now when it comes to the database, I'm just going to go with something that I've been using recently. It works really well. It's very simple. I'm just going to go ahead and use a Postgres 
database running on Superbase. I found that it's just the easy service. I've been using it recently. So I'm just gonna go with whatever is easiest in this case. Now, before I get into the next section, if you have a special request about what you'd like to see in the process of me building out this new SaaS, make sure to jump into the comments and let me know. I'll make sure to read every comment. I'll see you there. Now let's go ahead and talk about the strategy and then the overall marketing plan on how I plan to do everything. So first, if there's one thing that I've learned in 35 years of building tech, both in the software realm and in the AI automation space, keep it simple. One of the biggest things about trying to launch software is that a lot of the times as a founder, you're really interested in all of the features that you could build out. I actually have quite a big vision for this. Even the existing content engine database is quite complex. It can do a lot of different things. So even as I start to think about this SaaS version, there's a lot that I want to build that I'm not going to build in the beginning. In fact, in the first version, I'm going to focus on one simple feature and make it really, really good so that people actually like to use it. And I'm going to restrain myself from doing anything else until I have one really cool feature that people are using and they really like. And hopefully because of that, they're going to be asking for all sorts of other features. That's really the metric I'm looking for. Are they willing to pay me for this service? Are they really raving about the one feature that I gave them? And because of that, are they asking for a bunch of other features that I could build out later. Part of my strategy is also to have a lot of fun. I'm building in a space that I love. I'm a content creator myself. I have a YouTube channel. So I'm building this product as a content creator for content creators, and I want it to be fun. And I'm not necessarily trying to build the next Amazon or the next unicorn startup. I don't really have an interest in having that type of lifestyle. I'm going to build something that's fun, and I'm going to launch it as quickly as I can. I'm going to try to make it profitable as quick as I can. I'm not trying to just get as many users as I can and we'll worry about profit later. I'm actually going to try to charge for it as quickly as I can so that it is actually profitable. And remember, what I want to try to do is get to 1K a month in recurring revenue within the first 30 days. Now, in terms of marketing, what I plan to do is, of course, make YouTube videos. I'm going to document the actual process. And my existing audience is very much interested in content. So there is a overlap between tech and content. And I'm also going to use the school platform. One thing that I have noticed over the last few years is that all of the good products are built around community. They're not just about the product themselves. There's a group of people that are all passionate about the same thing. And in fact, even though this is a tech product inside this community, there's a whole lot more that we can talk about other than just the tech. Yeah, we can request new features and talk about bugs and all those different things, but we can also talk about creating content. As a community, we can help each other create content. I can talk about everything that I know about content. I can talk about growing on YouTube. I can talk about growing on TikTok. Everybody else can help each other as well. I'd love to get some help on how to grow on Instagram. I'm good at video, but other people are better at written content. So what I wanna do is create a community that people want to go to even if the tech didn't exist. The tech is just going to be a bonus because what I really want is for this community to grow and go viral on its own. I want people talking about it. And then there's just going to be a really cool tech product as a byproduct of being in the community. So that's the strategy. We're going to keep it simple. We're going to build one feature and we're going to make it work really well. This is going to allow us to keep costs down and actually deliver results to actually charge something to achieve profitability as quickly as we can. And two, we're going to build it around community so that it is much more than just a tech tool so that people really want to be here so that we can build out the word of mouth marketing engine, which is really going to be the best way to grow any new product in this modern age. And then, of course, I'm going to create lots of content on YouTube, on TikTok. I'm going to be talking about the actual process to build this out. And then, of course, I'll talk about content and how to create content, the tool itself. And I think between these three different things here, this is going to be a good strategy that will win. Now, if you'd like to be more involved, I do have a couple of communities that you can find in the description below. I'd love to see you there. Either way, I'll see you on the next video.